This timing diagram example continues on from the previous video, showing what happens with the scan cycle, different stages, as our inputs are changing. So just to recap, at the start of our scans, scan cycle, we have the state of our physical input being copied into the memory of the PLC. And then in the middle of the scan cycle, we have the ladder logic being executed. So it's a ladder logic up here, the combinations of inputs controlling the output. So it's going to control the memory part of the output in the, in the middle of the scan cycle. And then at the end of the scan cycle, that memory value gets transferred to become a true a true state in the output circuit. So I've gone through and added marks in here for the start and end of each scan cycle. So we'll just carry on with this first input to see what's going to happen. So we've got here already that at the start of this scan cycle the PLC sees that the input is in an off state. So for that entire scan cycle the memory value for that one stays off. Even though there is a pulse there that pulse has actually occurred at the wrong time, so the PLC completely ignores that. At this next scan cycle, we still see the same. Our input stays off. Until now, we do get a scan cycle that corresponds with when our input is on. The value gets stored in the memory, and then again, the memory switches off. Doing the same thing for our second input, IO2. We're lining up with these different input points. It's going to stay off, then switch on at this point. The scan cycle stays on again through to here and stays on right till the end. So you'll notice that this little dip for I02, that one actually never shows up in the, the actual memory. So it's another issue where you get these short pulses, whether it's a pulse changing from low to high or high to low. The PLC can miss those. But it does mean that our PLC gets to execute the ladder logic based on some very stable states of the inputs. So now that we are executing the logic, we've got normally open and normally closed. So looking at the values that we have in the scan cycle, we have two inputs that are in low states. So that's going to cause the logic for the output to turn off. So that memory value, as soon as the program gets to the part of executing that program, it's going to turn off and it can't change until getting into the second scan cycle. The second scan cycle, we've got I02 being in an on state. Whenever this actual input is on, our ladder logic tells us that, that the output must be off. And that happens for the remainder of this program. So I'm just going to draw that right across the output cannot turn on. Now for our physical output circuit, that's the part that changes at the end of the scan cycle. So you can see we had this de delay effect where our memory value was updated as the program went through scanning and then at the end of the scan cycle that got transferred to the physical output circuit. And the same thing again. That value gets transferred so it means that at the end of that scan cycle, our output is going to turn off and everything else makes it stay off until the end of that program runs. So if you're careful with these ones, looking at the different stages of the scan cycle, where the first stage is transferring the physical input value into the memory for the PLC. The second part is using the combination of the memory values to create Another, a memory value for the output based on whatever the ladder logic tells us to do. And the third part is transferring that memory value for our output to the physical output circuit, just at the very last part of the scan cycle. So hopefully that helps you understand how scan cycles and PLC ladder logic work together. Stay tuned for the next video.